How much are you following what's going on with gene editing with this company called CRISPR that just got this new approval by the FDA on December 8, 2023? CRISPR gene editing drug for sickle cell disease has officially been approved. So imagine what this whole gene editing means. Let's just say, you know how nowadays people say, well, I don't want to just have one baby. I just want to do it once and I want to have three babies. You couldn't do that before. That's normal now. What if you can go to the doctor and you say, Okay, doc, here's the menu. What would you like? I want him to be 6'5". No, no, babe, that's too tall, 6'3 and a half. He's gonna be 6'3 and a half. What color eyes do you want him to have? Green eyes. Green eyes it is. How big arms do you want? You have what? How about shoe size? I'd like him to end up having 13 and a half shoes. Oh, that's exactly what it's going. How about hair? Blonde? No, not blonde. Let's... Can you imagine if you could do that? By the way, that's the direction we're going. This company, CRISPR, gets started in 2013, goes public in 2016, becomes almost a $200 share company. Right now, it's around $60 to $68, give or take, four and a half billion dollar company. And while you're listening to this, and you're saying, Pat, this is craziness. There's no way we're going this direction. Well, apparently CRISPR can cure cancer, blood disorders, blindness, AIDS, cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, Huntington disease, and COVID-19. And by the way, you want to know a little weird thing? What's going on with China? In 2020, a U.S. intelligence report showed that China conducted human testing on members of the People's Liberation Army. PLA in hope of developing soldiers with biologically enhanced capabilities similar to movies like Captain America, Bloodshot, and Universal Soldier. That's the direction we're going to today. This simple patent that was started by somebody in UC Berkeley, this lady who starts it, but the credit to the patent ends up going to Harvard and MIT, and they're the ones that own this concept called CRISPR. So we're gonna talk about that today. Very weird, stick around. If you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. Again, CRISPR, what does it even stand for? Clustered, regularly, interspaced, short, palindromic repeats is what CRISPR stands for. Now, according to Statista, the market size for this in 2023 is $2.4 billion, but in 10 years, they're predicting for it to be shy of $33 billion. This is a revolutionary technology in the field of genetics. It's a tool that allows scientists to precisely edit genes with organisms. CRISPR is used to make specific changes in the DNA of plants, animals, and humans. This includes adding removing or altering sections of the DNA sequence. The reason why I have a smile on my face is because you're pretty much playing God is what you're doing. What kind of a human being do you want to build? What kind of an animal do you want? What kind of a plant do you want? They can even fix your salad, the flavor, the taste. They can make a carrot taste like cherries. They can do all this. This is not just like out of a movie. This is actually reality where we're going to right now. So CRISPR-Cas9 edits genes by precisely cutting DNA and then harnessing natural DNA repair processes to modify the gene in the desired manner. The system has two components, the Cas9 enzyme and a guide RNA. Now, here's what's important. I mean, this company, CRISPR, got started 2013, goes public 2016, is worth around $4.5 billion. Their CEO is somebody that's been at McKinsey for nine years, Smart. Kulkarni. So that's somebody that's connected. When you're with McKinsey, you know you have connections with everybody. So imagine the contact of, hey, we're trying to get this product into this McKinsey relationship, countries, foreign, other companies, investments. It's the right lineage of opportunities for this company. And they've already, as of 2023, more than 200 people have been treated with experimental CRISPR therapies. I'll give you a couple testimonies and stories here. First one is Victoria Gray, 37-year-old survivor of sickle cell disease, spoke about her transformative experience with gene editing treatment. She described a childhood and adolescence marred by severe symptoms and dreams deferred after receiving a transfusion of genetically edited cells from her bone marrow, which she calls super cells. She felt an immediate sense of rebirth and gradually saw significant health improvements over seven to eight months. Her story, marked by newfound enjoyment of life, deeply moved the audience, including typically stoic scientists. 
What's important to know is, some of them may be watching, so is this stem cells? Is that what you're talking Because everybody's talking about stem cells. Stem cells is something you add. Either you can take it from your own body and give it back to yourself, or you can take it from somebody else and put it in yourself. This is, they're taking a part of your gene out, they're editing and putting a new one in there to manipulate it, in other words. And that's what they did with Victoria Gurr. Here's another one. October 2021, CRISPR Therapeutics gave preliminary results for individuals with lymphomas who had been treated and followed for at least for four weeks after treatment. Side effects were not severe and the safety profile was superior to other CART products in these patients almost 60% showed a positive response to treatments with 21% showing no signs of disease for six months after a single treatment that leaves 19% does that mean the other 19% turned into zombies they didn't tell us what happened to the other 19% but apparently 60% showed positive response so you got to keep this in mind 21% 21% showing no signs of disease after six months, after a single treatment, that's one in five no longer have cancer? What? How many people you think would want to say, I want to be part of that 200? But again, not enough research, that's what's only 200 of them, but let's continue. 2017, team of researchers led by Shukart Mitalipov, a genetic uh, at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, reported that human embryos carrying a mutation could be repaired using this method. The researchers generate embryos from a union between two cells, a sperm carrying a mutation that can make it harder for the heart to pump blood, and an egg with a healthy version of the gene. Doctor and his team use CRISPR-Cas9 to cut the broken copy of the gene to see if the intact version would guide its repair. They reported the experiment a success and published it in the journal Nature. This is pretty wild. If you think about what it's saying. You go to the doctor, the doctor tells you your baby has a 70% chance of being Down syndrome. These guys can use CRISPR-Cas9 to cut the gene and edit it with the right gene so the kid will be okay, won't end up being Down syndrome. So this is personal to me because we've gone through it in our family. Think about the possibilities of what this could do. Again, you are playing God but the capabilities are unbelievable. Here's another one for you, adverse results. 27-year-old Terry Horgan was participating in a clinical trial for a CRISPR treatment aimed at Duchenne muscular dystrophy tragically passed away. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a fatal condition characterized by progressive muscle degeneration, the exact cause of Terry's death, and whether it was related to the CRISPR treatment remains unclear. By the way, the other negative adverse results of this could be a re- the wrong arrangements of DNA. So imagine they're rearranging the DNA and all of a sudden the sequencing is off, which could lead to random mutations by error. You don't know what that's going to look like. There's obviously a big risk for that. So maybe a person that's willing to use this is on the last straw and they're saying, look, I'm willing to be tested for this because the alternative is I'm dead. I'll test this out. Yes, but there's also adverse risk to what's possible because they're barely learning about this stuff. Here's another crazy story for you. This one, brace for impact because it's a little too crazy. So fetal gene therapy in 2018 when he, Jiang Kui, a Chinese scientist, used the technology to yield the world's first gene edited infants. But it doesn't end there. The experiment was widely condemned as irresponsible and dangerous in large part because many of the ways in which CRISPR-Cas9 can affect cells remain poorly understood. The doctor was found guilty of conducting illegal medical practices in China and was sentenced to three years in prison. Apparently, he said these infants are built in a perfect way where they'll never have AIDS. How are you going to know if they're never going to have AIDS? This is the part where the, this technology in the wrong people's hands, what are they going to do with it? And can you imagine, well, no, we're just going to do all good. There's a lot of weird people in the world, those scientists that sit in the lab and they're like, I'm going to test all this stuff out. What are they going to be building? That's another one of those things that concern certain people. So, so here's the thing. There's a couple ways you can think about this. None of this should surprise any one of us. If you saw Fly, the movie, that's gene editing. If you saw X-Man, the movie, that's gene editing. They were capable of doing some crazy stuff. You think that's just a movie? Like you, one day somebody won't be able to do that. If you saw Jurassic Park, gene editing, Elysium, gene editing, Star Trek, I can give you a lot of different movies. You know these movies, gene editing. It's not abnormal that this is taking place and people are inspired. A lot of these movies are predictive programming that one day someone's going to be doing this. The question then becomes is the following. You saw the movie Oppenheimer and you're sitting there like, okay, we invented something that can destroy the world. Just so you know, we have it today. If you and I wanted to destroy the world today, the world has it today. It's not like we haven't had it. We've had it for a long time. How come the world hasn't been destroyed? Well, 
so far, somebody evil hasn't yet pressed the button. Does that mean someone's not going to do in the future? Of course not. It just means we haven't yet. Does it mean somebody can take this and grow it to a level where we lose control of it? Well, that's the problem with AI, right? What if you keep building AI and the battle between Elon and some of these other folks, the humanists and the guys that are thinking we ought to build AI, what if robots become stronger than us? What if this gene editing creates a gene where it's so powerful that you lose control of it? What do we have to do? Capture it? Arrest it? All these thoughts that you think about, right? Where it can go, it's endless stories. Um, however, it is concerning. There's a lot of good that can be uh, done with it. When guns were invented, everybody thought it was it. It was terrible. It protected others from bullying others. Bullies were now afraid to go break into a house. The good, the bad, the ugly is there here with this. Uh, but this is the closest thing to us playing God if we go in this direction. And if there's a God, I don't know if God's going to be happy about this. If we're not sitting there, you know, saying, hey, this is good what you've done so far, but we're going to take it to a whole different level because we got something you never know how to do. If there's a guy who's gonna say, okay, relax, here's what I'm gonna do, boom, go, restart, what? Yes, again, if there isn't, we'll see that as well. There's a lot of this that can be deeply concerning with what direction it goes to. I think it's just the beginning, but if you think this is not gonna be happening or it's not gonna be around, you're also naive and you're fooling yourself. Having said that, if you got value out of this video, give it thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I did a video on China's demographics, if you've never seen this. So imagine if China uses gene editing to increase the number of girls or boys that they wanna have with their population to catch up. Who knows, if you've never seen it, click here to watch the video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.